Howdy, I'm Bob Terry. Thanks for joining us for another fantastic, classic Western film. The Apache Kids Escape from 1930, starring Jack Perrin. Jack started in films in 1916, after he finished fighting in World War I. He has over 400 film credits as an actor. He started out in silent films and made the transition to talkies very well and found his niche in making action-packed westerns. Jack was born Layman Wakefield Perrin in Three Rivers, Michigan on July 25th, 1896. For the most part, he went by Jack Perrin in credits of movies, but he also went by a few other names, including Jack Gable and Richard Terry. Because of his contributions as an actor to the motion picture industry, Jack Perrin was awarded a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame at 1777 Vine Street in Hollywood, California. Brought to you here free online by westernsontheweb.com. Sit back, relax, kick your boots up, and enjoy this wonderful classic entertainment. And we'll see you after the movie. There's only one way to get that fella, and that is to trail him. He's got a fast horse and we can't catch him, so you fellas go back to town and I'll take his trail and stay with it until I get him. Well, whatever you say, Sheriff. All right, adios. Okay, Chief. Harris, you finally got mixed up with Uncle Sam, didn't you? Well, I was broke. And I knew you wouldn't hold up the stagecoach to pull a federal job. So I took a chance as a lone hand. So you wore a checkered scarf. So they would think I, the Apache kid, did the trick. Now, Buck, you know we agreed not to operate in this district. Protect this hideout. Now, why do you double-cross me that way? <laughs> so that's...
that's the gag, eh? My old partner in crime. He's gonna go the straight and narrow road, I suppose. That's <laughs> just what I intend to do. I'm tired of this bracket, and I'm going to try to redeem myself and prove that my lesson may be lasting. Can you beat this for luck? This letter's for me. Yeah? Why, it must have followed me all over the country. It'd be a very interesting letter, then. What got into you, anyhow? If you were so honest about Uncle Sam's mail, why did you open that letter? Uh, listen, if you're worrying about your old woman, you might as well forget it. Because if she was any good, she would never worry about the likes of you. Now, you listen to me, Buck. You keep my mother's name out of your filthy mouth. Or I'll close it for you. Yeah? You and how many? We're going to deliver it back to the express company, you understand? Now hurry up. Come on, pick it up. you, Apache. And this time with the good. You're wrong, Sheriff. I'm not the Apache kid. He just beat it. Come on, get up out there. Well, if you're not the Apache kid, who are you? Where did he come from? And where is he drifting to? Oh. He's no Indian, Sheriff. He is raised over here near the Apache reservation. He's probably on his way to his old stomping ground right now. Well, there's no time for talk. Come on, let's get going. Now here, Sheriff. Suppose I help you capture this bandit and bring him to justice. Will you see that I get out of all this mix-up? I'll not guarantee you anything except this. I'll see that you'll not hang the no telegraph pole. Say, Sheriff, I just read a letter from his sister telling that his mother was very sick. I know that's where he's headed for. And if you'll let me, I can lead you right to the place. I, uh, how far is it over that place? Oh, it's a nice ride. We can be there by sunup, all right. Be there by sunup, huh? All right. Let's get going and get over there. Hey, there's the place, Sheriff. And that's the place where he was raised. And if he ain't there now, he'll be there right smartly. Yeah? Well, let me tell you, we'll camp right here until he shows up. And when he does, we'll grab him. I'll do what I can to help you.
Do you see that, Sheriff? There's your man. I think I've proven myself a man of my word. But be careful. He's quicker than chain lightning. Hey, listen. Yeah? You go over back to the shack and get in a conversation with him. He knows you, and he knows that you're unarmed. Understand? I'll come up back of you and get the drop on him. Well, I just don't like that idea, Sheriff. What's the matter? You got cold feet? Well, I'll tell you. He and I, we just don't... Well, we just don't hitch somehow. Hey, listen. You're my prisoner now, and you'll do as I say. Come on, get going. I have no gun. I'm unarmed. What are you doing here? Well, I'll tell you. Kid, I'm in trouble. I'm in serious trouble. I thought perhaps you could help me out a little bit. Then holding up stagecoaches again. Well, I'd, I'd hardly admit a thing like that. When I was over across the... Well, I got you covered. Stick them up. Get up here, Sheriff. Come on here, Sheriff. Get up. You're not hurt. Come on. Get up here. Come on here, Sheriff. Get up. You're not hurt. Come on. Get up here. Hurry up. Make it snappy. I'm sorry to have to take your artillery, Sheriff. But I assure you, it will be returned. Listen, stranger. You're pulling something you're going to be sorry of. And for you, Buck Harris. If we ever meet again, you better start shooting first. Yeah, well, I usually do. You don't have to remind me of it. So long, boys. Adios. Well, you got away with that one. But you'll come back with this one. Come on now, let's get to our horses, make it snappy. And you stick too close to me, too, you understand? Okay, sure. Well, let's be going. got a chance of getting away. The bridge is washed out. We got him trapped right where we want him. Come on, let's go. Now listen, Sheriff. I know that fox. He's going to double back on his tracks. And when he does, I'll be right here to get him. Well, then you stay here until I bring him back. those steers over in the ravine. All right, Jim. Ted, I've been doing a lot of wondering the last two weeks. I can't figure out why your old man cut off your spending money the very day you broke the news to him that you were going to marry Jane. It strikes me as being very peculiar. Well, I know it does seem funny, Jim, but, well... I don't mind the spending money so much, but 
Well, not being able to give Jane a little present on her birthday, you know, makes it pretty tough. I'd sure like to help you, but I'm as flat as a pancake, too. You know, old man Wilson hasn't paid a cent for the last two weeks. Say, Ted, I got a nice checkered scarf here that a girl might like. I know men never cared very much for it, but I want you to take it and make Jane a present of it. That sure is great of you, Jim. But are you sure you won't be needing it anymore? No, Ted. I'll not be using it anymore. And it's yours for the asking. Well, thanks. You know, that's a dandy. right past him. And then he won't see us. All right. Come on. Oh, I beg your pardon. And how are you girls today? Good morning. Uh, Jane, uh, have you seen my son Ted this morning? Why, yes. Uh, he and the new cowhand are bringing in a new bunch of longhorns. Oh, isn't that lovely? <laughs> I must say that you're looking very sweet and charming this morning. You'll pardon us, Mr. Conway, but uh, we have to go back to the ranch. Dad's waiting for his mail. Oh, now, isn't that wonderful? Uh, by the by, I have an appointment with your father, so if you don't mind, I'll ride over with you. Oh, but uh, but, but we have some things we have to do first. Uh, uh, it's, they're, they're very important. Come on, Sally. She'll get rid of me like that, huh? I guess not. I'll just follow her anyway. Come on, Sally. Let's hurry before Mr. Conway follows us. Howdy, Wilson. Well, how are you, Conway? What can I do for you? I would like to have a little talk with you. Not here, please. You know what you're oh, that's so fair, I can't get in here. So, uh, oh, that's so fair, Ted. Now, listen, if you don't keep still, I'm going to kiss you, too. No, you won't. Oh, yeah, won't I, Dave? You yes, can. Yes, yeah. I will. <laughs> yes, I, yes, I will. The fact is, uh, I have a confession I want to make to you. A confession? Yes. I mean that Ted Conway is not my son. Orphan picked up on the plains after an Indian attack. If what you say be true, Mr. Conway, and I must believe the evidence of your own lips. You must realize that all thought of a marriage between my daughter and Ted is utterly impossible. I wonder where Jim is. Why, I don't know. He was here just a few minutes ago. <laughs> Why, he must have dropped right out of sight. Now, I thought you would say that. I would say the same thing if I were in your boots. That's a pity, too. I'm very, very sorry about that. For I had absolutely decided to settle a very large sum on the young bride. In view of the fact that her marriage to my son is entirely out of the question, she will marry me. I will settle ten times the amount on her that I intended settling on her had she married my son. 
And you can invest the money in any way that you see fit. Furthermore, I will destroy those personal notes that I hold against you. And you know, Wilson, what that would mean to you, don't you? All right now, Wilson, what do you say? Do I get her? Yes or no? Well... Hello, Dad. Hello, boys. Hi, Son. Dad. I'd like to have you ride back to town with me. I have a very important talk that I want to have with you. Why, uh, Dad, I'm very busy, and uh, can we put off at some other time? No, it's imperative that you should go now. Well, uh, thanks. Bye. All right, goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, Sally. Bye. Bye, Jane. Adios. Goodbye. Well, where did you come from? I've been putting a little hay in the feed rack. Where's Ted going? Ted and his dad are going to town. Did he say when he'd be back? Oh, he'll be right back. He's going to wipe the dishes. Well, can I help you with the dishes? Well, you might put them away. Well, that's fair enough. Before I announce my engagement to Jane, I'm awfully sorry, my boy. You know, I did everything in the world I could for you. I, I even offered to settle a large sum of money upon the young lady. Well, nevertheless, I'm going over to the ranch and find out from Mr. Wilson's own lips whether or not I may call on Jane. No, 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 that won't do you any good, Ted. Old Wilson has placed an armed guard around the ranch with instructions to keep you off. Now, now, listen, Ted, my boy. Go on, forget all about this girl, and here, I'll give you uh, a nice lot of money, and you can go out and have a good time. Forget all about her. Go on. Keep your filthy money. How would you girls like to see Starlight do a few tricks? Oh, we'd love to. What can he do? You'll just have to wait and see. Starlight, here, get ready now, boy. Come on, get out of here. Oh, Jane, will you come here a moment, please? Yes, Dad. Jane? Less than one hour ago, King Conway told me that Ted is not his son. He was a foundling picked up in the wreck of a wagon train. And for that reason, I have called off the marriage between you and Ted. I don't believe it. And furthermore, I refuse to give up Ted. Five thousand bucks, dead or alive. That'll show sure be worth time. Well, I just got a report from the Fed. He's around here and we want to watch for it. 
Well, I'm going to do some high riding. Boys, look like we're going to have to get do some riding. Five thousand good or alive. Five thousand. Well, that's. Here, Mr. Bell, you're going to have to get some riding. Well, I'm going to do some high I don't think we'd have much trouble in catching him, but what would we do with all the money? Well, I'll buy a new horse. Well, what's the matter with Starlight? Oh, he's all right. <laughs> well, Sally, I think we'd better go looking for Ted. All right, Jim. <laughs> Why, hello, Jim. What are you doing here? Well, just the boy we were looking for. Say, Ted, I want to talk to you around the corner. All right, Jim. Jane wanted us to tell you not to worry. And she wants you to get in touch with her as soon as possible. Well, thanks very much, Jim. But, well, I suppose you've heard all about it. Dad disinherited me so he could have Jane for himself. <laughs> Why, listen, Ted. Do you think from one minute that Jane would give Mr. Conway the second look? Why, that's ridiculous. Well, of course she wouldn't. You know better than that, Ted. Well, say, I wonder if you folks will excuse me. I have some very important business I want to attend to, and, and well, and say, would you please tell Jane that I'll be down to the ranch to see her just as soon as I can? Okay, uh, Ted. All right. Oh, he's just a little worried. Come on, Sally, let you and I ride back to the ranch. All Now, now. Why all the tears? I'm worried over Ted. Why, Ted can take care of himself. I hope so. Where's your dad? Dad's down at the barn. Has he said anything more about Mr. Conway? I believe Dad's a little ashamed of himself. One moment he does something, and the next moment he's sorry for it. I just don't know how to figure him out. Say, Jane, how much did your dad owe Mr. Conway? A great deal. More, perhaps, than any of us could raise. Well, I'm sorry to see you folks in this mess. And I would like to help you in any way that I can. Thanks for your offer. But I'm afraid the amount Dad owes would be impossible for you to raise. To me now, yes. But perhaps the Apache kid might help. Jim, you act just like you know the Apache kid. Well, you know, there's a big reward out for him. And I have a hunch I can capture that fellow. And I bet you could, too, Jim. Charlie? Hello, Charlie. Stage coach was held up down in Red Rock Canyon. What? Say, you was driving, wasn't you, Joe? Yes, sir. All right, tell me about it. I was held up by the Apache kid. And I can huh? tell by the checkered scarf that he wore. He didn't harm any of the passengers, but he took the money, the box with your money in it. Took my money, huh? Yes, sir. And Bob here says it was your son. What? I, I seen him open the strong box and 
put it in his saddlebag and ride off. Wait, I might have had a gun after this. Gun. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute there. How do you know it's my son, Ted? I know Ted well. Charlie, as deputy sheriff, I want you to ride out to old Wilson's ranch. Most likely that's where you're going to find him. Son or no son, I want you to bring him in. All right, Mr. Conway. I'll get on my way. All right. Listen here. You said it was Ted and you're sure of it, huh? I can swear to it. Mm -hmm. Jane. Ted! Well, where have you been? Well, I've just been in town. I told you you didn't have to worry about him. Why, certainly, was you worrying about me? You know, I can't understand, Jane, why your father should object to me now. I can't either, Ted. Now listen, Ted. Hold your own and don't weaken. Ted, I've been blind. And today, my eyes have been opened to the temptations I've had, the wrongs I've done, and the suffering I have caused others. I have learned to love justice. And all I want is, is the chance to redeem myself and show that my lesson has been sincere. I'm sure glad you feel that way about it, Mr. Wilson. Thanks, boy. Dad. Why, Dad, that's the first smile I've seen on your face for months. Don't you smile when you're happy? I surely do. I hate the door, Pard. But I'm renting you on suspicion of impersonating the Apache kid to hold up the stage. Why? Why? Sheriff, why? Why, I was no place around when the stagecoach was held up. What? Honest, I wasn't. And besides, you, you can't arrest me without a warrant anyhow. Oh, I can't, can't I? No, you can't. Not if I got anything to say about it. Well, I am. And you can't help him. You keep out of this, or I'm going to take you along, too. All right, Sheriff. I'm not calling your bluff now. Ah, well, there we are. Just the evidence I've been looking for. Why, Ted, isn't that the scarf you bought downtown yesterday for Jane's birthday? Why, yes. Why, yes, Sheriff, I bought that for Jane. I'm going to give it to her tomorrow. Oh, here now. That same old stuff. Better tell that to the judge. Now, come on. We'll take a ride into town. Your friend here can take care of you later. Oh, there, there, dear. Don't cry. Don't cry, dear. I know you're not asking me for any help now, but I think an alibi can be established for Ted. And I'm going into town and see what I can do now. Thanks, Jim. You've been a true and loyal friend. And I don't know what we can do to show our appreciation. Jane, I usually work on hunches. And you leave the rest to me. Cowboy story, 
together with his checkered scarf, is evidence enough that unless he can establish a pretty good alibi, I'm afraid this land will go pretty tough with him. I understand that, Deputy. Well, if you fellas have something you'd like to say to each other, I can step out for a few minutes. Thanks. Sit down, Ted. Talk this over. Where'd you hide that money, Ted? What money? You know what I mean. Well, why accuse me of that? When you know the real Apache kid is operating in this territory. Ted? I'm the real Apache kid. I can't take time to explain it to you now. But if you want me to help you, kid, you would never have tried to impersonate him. And in a way, I feel responsible. Now, I'm going to try to prove an alibi for you with the understanding that you will go straight from now on. Jim, I give you my word of honor, and I won't betray you this time. Okay, Ted. Now tell me, where did you hide the money? You know the hollow oak near the Dark Canyon Road? Why well, was your boys that time enough? Sure have, uh, Deputy. Goodbye, Ted. Goodbye, Jim. Howdy, right, stranger. Go ahead, mister. I want to see you just a minute. Go on. gentlemen. It looks like my son is guilty, all right. Every indication points that way. Course, I would drop the charges against him if I could get my money back. Yes, sir. The boys are off trying to find out where he hid the money now. I hope they find it. You know... I'm called the Apache Kid, boys. And I'm tough. And if you don't think I'm not, just call my blood. Now, see him up. Keep him high, you pot belly coyote. Come on now. Don't you move. You, come over here and turn around. All right, that's enough. Now you, hurry up here. Mr. Banker? Yes, sir. I want to make a little bit in your bank. Yes, sir. And I want you to take mighty good care of it. Yes, sir. You understand? Yes, sir. And remember, it's your own money. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. To get over there. Get over there, you cradle snatcher. Hurry up. Yes, sir. Oh, please, Mr. Uh, Apache Kid, please don't take those papers. They're just a couple of personal notes. They'll be worthless to you, but they mean a very great deal to me. Now, please don't take them, will you? I'll make sure they're worthless. And I'm sure sorry to spoil your little game. But I'm here to prove that the boy you've got locked in jail is not the Apache Kid. What? Are you two eggs? Get over here. Hurry up. Yes, sir. You, you hot belly cradle snatcher. Yes, sir. 
my final warning to you is that boy better be out of jail when I return to town. If he's not, I'll break your neck. I promise you that he'll be out of jail just as soon as I can get to the sheriff. Yep, my money's all there. Don't stand there. Go on and get the sheriff. Get out of here. Go get the sheriff while I lock up the money. I'll get him myself. Hey, Sheriff! 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 I, I just been held up by the Apache kid. There he goes! Don't let him escape! Hey, boys! Yes? The Apache kid just robbed the bank. Now, who wants to ride with me? I want to All fight. right, wait. I'll wait. I'll wait. Get on your horse. All right, Sheriff. Wait a minute, Sheriff. Wait a minute. Before you go, you, you better let Ted out of jail. Because the Apache kid might change his notion and come back here. And if he did, he'd break my neck. Well, don't you worry about that. But I'll let him out. All right. You wait, boys. Let that him relieves out. me. Oh, boys. The sheriff said turn you loose. He did? So get your lid and go out and see if you can't help capture that Apache kid. Well, you bet your life, Deputy. Did you let Ted out? Yes, he's off. That's fine, Sherry Paul. All right, boys, let's do it. Now let's get it.
That looks like him over there, boys. Come on, let's get him. What's the meaning of this? There's your Apache kid, Sheriff. That's the man we're looking for. But how did you do it, Jim? We met, and I fired. I cornered him on top of that cliff. We battled all over the place, and pretty soon, he slipped and fell. Doesn't this clear Ted and let him go free? How about it, boys? You bet. All right. All right. The passing out of the Apache kid is going to serve to keep other desperados out of this district. Shake. You're right, Sheriff. I nearly forgot to say goodbye to my only little sweetheart. Well, Jim, I don't want to see you go. Please don't go. Goodbye, Sally. Goodbye, Jim. Thanks for joining us for this classic Western film, this wonderful movie. We appreciate you being here, we appreciate you watching our films, and we hope you'll come on by westernsontheweb.com. Over 2,000 Western films to watch free, and they're brought to you by westernsontheweb.com. I'm Bob Terry, have a great-tastic day, and we hope to see you again on down the trail. you're hanging the wrong man. I reckon we feel right sorry if we ever found out. Let's get this thing over with. Run your horse if you natural, him, men. He's stolen my boot.
Have you got anything to say before you go? Gentlemen, I still say I'm innocent. And I'm still saying I don't believe you. Put him away up, gentlemen. No, no, not you. Who? Me? And the other one. Easy. Now, I get the idea that you're about to hang my friend here. That was the idea. He seems to think he's innocent. Say, hey, I could hang this old rascal for anything you can think of. And I still think I'd be right. <laughs> well, what do you think about it? Well, being what you might call entirely innocent, I'm a Guinness. No hanging today, boys. Go on, son, get around there. Now, if you boys will kindly dismount... I'm going to have to trouble you boys for your gun. Thank you. Put them on the end here. You. Come on, come on. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> ah. Well, Sheriff, I guess I'm going to have to skip you. <laughs> Thank you. That's my hat. That was your hat. Reimburse the gentleman for the chapeau. The what? The hat. The hat. Oh. The sombrero. <laughs> now, if there's any left over, Chef, you buy your men some new boots. They're taking your guns and your horses down the road a piece. <laughs> Goodbye. Come on, friend. Let's go. <clears throat> Empty rifle shells. Larry Nelson. That's a right nice name. How long you had it? Oh, ever since I can remember. Well, that's quite unusual. Folks around here change the names quite frequently. Especially them that carry wooden guns. <laughs> There's only a state line ought to be around here somewhere. When we're across that, we'll be safe. Uh, I wouldn't say we're safe anywhere around here. A little too quick with their hanging. <laughs> well, it didn't hang you, did it? No, but they tried too hard enough. I was riding in a circle looking for a job. My horse was tired, so I changed him for a fresh one, leaving mine in its place. First thing I know, I had a rope around my neck. I ran across you and you're in the same fix. And me, the innocentest man in the entire country. When you get back to Wyoming, I always want you to remember that when you stopped that hanging, you saved the innocentest man in New Mexico. Yes, sir. Always be known as Honest Tracks with him. Yeah. Well, come around here. I want you to meet a friend of yours. Honest Tax Williams. Five hundred dollars reward. Why, this is the first time in over 35 years of business activity that they offered less than a thousand dollars reward. Why, it's an outrage. It's a disgrace. <laughs> Why, I could sue him for that. Laramie, take me back to Wyoming. They don't appreciate me here no more. Well, don't take it to hard back. I'll take you back if you promise to reform. You take me back and I'll do the doggondest job of reformating you ever hear and tell of. Fuck. 
five years since I've used this marriage service, but I, I suppose the rules are just the same. So, uh, I, uh, so, well, this, uh, this here is a hunting license, but according to Hoyle, I need only to change a word or two to make it a bona fide marriage license. Now, you just make yourself comfortable while I... I've got to ask you a few questions required by law before I can collect my fee. You know, this is the first time I ever was married. No. Yes, sir. I've got to put your names down so the law knows who's marrying who. What's yours? Alonzo Q. Mulhall. Alonzo Q. Yeah. The Q is put in for punctuation, I suppose. Alonzo A. L. I'm going to do you a favor, young fellow. I'll just put you down as Al. <laughs> uh, your name? Lenta Lindsay. From the Spanish Peaks Range? Yes, ma'am. We rode all the way horseback. Well, you, you must be tired. Oh, oh no, we're not. not. Yes, he... See, I, I knew your father awfully well, the Colonel. Oh, Lord. I, I never miss seeing him whenever he came up here. Well, would you mind hurrying? You see, we're starting for Kentucky as soon as we're married. But you... You're not a loping, are you? Oh, no. We're just in a hurry. Yeah, I can see that. my reforming it. Now, listen, Fax, old boy, you told me you were going to turn over a new leaf. I know, but you can't turn over a new leaf without first wetting your thumb. Maybe a good drink of water would do you. Water? Uh-huh. Water? Why, there ain't no such thing as a good drink of water. All right, make it quick, then. I'll meet you up at the general store. bad mess. I guess I'll have to unhitch him. Oh, no, you won't. I know a better way than that. <laughs> Hold on. That's it. <sighs> now I'll take care of you. I hope we're in time. We'd better be. I now pronounce you. Have you married us? Not completely. I was about two-thirds through. Well, forget it. She belongs back on the ranch with her sister. Well, she's only a youngster. I'm sorry to spoil your wedding, darling. But you must wait till you're sure you love her. Well, why don't you do something about it? You said you were my knight in shining armor. You said not even dragons could stop you. But your sister isn't a dragon. Give me time, then. I gotta think. You can think by yourself. I'm going. Oh, I thought I was marrying a hero. You're a weak. You're a rabbit, that's what you are. A rabbit. The next time you show up at that ranch, I'm going to take a shot at you. Lock this idiot up for eloping with a miner. <clears throat> Alonzo Q. Uh, rabbit. But you never told me Monroe Adams had something to do with this, you know. It's none of his business. He's only the administrator of Colonel Lynch's estate. Well, he seems to make it his business. You know, the Colonel's horses must be worth a bit of money. And that Monroe Adams is a crafty lawyer when it comes to figures. No, I'll fix him before I get through. I'll fix them all. I know, I know that. That's something you've got to worry about. Well, uh, you've got to go to jail. <laughs> what for? What for? The drill stealing, that's what's for. You... I wish you'd taken a horse. I could have hung it. I'm not... Oh. How do you do, Mr. Smith? I'm... Sister, I'm a... Still, how do you do? There. Hey, sir. 
Sheriff. This little fella just shot a hole in the mirror back of the bar. Uh -huh. Come right with me, will you please? Now, uh -huh. wait a minute, wait a minute. I didn't shoot the bartender, did I? No, but you busted up the only looking glass in town. Come right with me, please, please. Don't suppose they could sue me for that, do you? Well, I, uh, this is a possibility. Tell me, Lonesome, when did this love business start? She was back in Kentucky. That was before her father died. Then her sister brought her out here. Mm -hmm. And you followed her out? That's it. Hello, Jack. Hello, Hello Jack. Uh, I'd, uh, I'd like to talk to you about that friend of mine. That friend of yours is better off in jail where he is. Yes, I know, but... I know. You may not know him as well as we do out here. Yes, but he, uh, he seems harmless enough. Well, that's only a question of geography. He's wanted in Kansas for cattle trouble, Colorado for horse complaint, and in Texas, the gang was running high the moment they see him coming. Huh. What is Arizona wanting for? Well, nothing yet. But there's a big herd of cattle coming in today, and the boys will be here for a couple of weeks spending their money while the herd rests up. Uh, so you're locking tracks up to keep them out of competition? Sure. We've got to give the local boys a break. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff, do you like this for me? Sure, certainly. And it's, you know, big doings tonight, you know. Mm -hmm. Fireworks. Here, try this, Jeff. Yeah, fireworks and everything. <laughs> yes, indeed, I'll light the last of 11 o'clock. <laughs> 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 Young fellow, you know it's against the law to leave horses unhitched around here. In the meantime, a uh, couple of weeks rest will do those two fellows good. And then her sister interfered. That's it. Why? Oh, she's got a ranch out there with a lot of valuable horses and... What'd you say? I said she's got a ranch with a lot of valuable horses and she thinks she can run it just like her father did. The fact is, she thinks she can run everything and everybody. Well, she seems to be doing pretty well. You see, what's the matter with you, Bud, is that you haven't had enough experience with the ladies. What you need is a good manager. What I need is somebody to get me out of here. Well, now, it's just coming to that. I'll not only get you out of here, but I'll elope you. And I'll make it stick if it's the last thing I ever do. Did you get the firecracker, Sonny? Oh, don't that store down there? Store, huh? Like a Democratic convention. Sure I do. Romance is when a man runs after a woman until she catches him. <laughs> I promise this lonesome fella here to elope him. Real sure fire elopement this trip. And if you'll help me, I'll do the cooking for the two of us till we get clean to Wyoming. Lonesome? You sure you love this girl? I'm sure I do. I'd die for her. It's pretty bad case, Laramie. Half dead already. Well, I guess I have to help you out. Come on. It's 
About the finest horse ranch in the West. There's the big herd over there. About six or seven hundred of them. Why well, even elope with an Eskimo for a herd like that? <laughs> <laughs> well, come on, let's ride in. Oh, not me. Adam said he'd shoot me on sight if he caught me around the ranch again. Well, maybe we better hide you out and we look things over. Come on. I hired you and your riders to take that herd of horses across the border and deliver them to my agent. Is that right? That's right. I drove this woman halfway across the state after a runaway sister to give you a chance to take those horses. That's right. What do you got to say for yourself? I come back and find the horses still here. Well, old Andy decided to put up a fight. It took us most of the night to ride his men out into the hills. Lucky for us, we caught him when he tried to get back to the ranch. There he is now. I'm going to tell Miss Harriet about this. Well, that's old Andy Winthrop, the foreman. Looks like a nice, quiet place. Everybody seems to like everybody else. Yeah, they seem to even be playing games. What do you want to do with them? Get them out of sight. Take them in there. You hire yeah. We're riding in. Here, son. Have a show. Man's remedy for solitude and heartache. I don't know what to do with him. I don't care what you do with him, as long as you keep his nose out of this. So far, you've made a mess out of it. Harriet Lindsay's got a deal on for those horses. The buyers are on the way. That means we've got to get that herd out of here. Name your time. I'll get them out. Make it tonight. You can't round up that herd that fast. Tomorrow night. At the very latest. You better get started before daybreak. How many horses did you say old Andy stole? Well, he didn't get any. Tried to get away with the whole herd, but the boys chased him off. I can't understand it. Andy Winthrop would have given his life for my father. Well, maybe, but not for you. Did you see a woman trying to run this ranch changes things? And old Andy saw his chance to make a lot of money. He's only human, and, well, he tried to get away with it. I just told Luke Arliss to take his place as foreman. Thought you'd want me to do that. Now, Mr. Adams, you're administering the estate. I'm running the ranch. I'd rather attend to these things myself. I'm sorry, but I thought it saved some time. We've got to get some more men in to take the place of those fellows that left with Andy. Bring Arledge, and I'll get in his instructions. I've ever seen on any ranch. Howdy, miss. Oh, we're looking for the boss. I'm the boss. What is it? <laughs> no, no, I mean the he boss. I'm the only boss there is around here. What can I do for you? We've uh, never worked for a woman before, but uh, maybe we can get used to it. Oh, you want to go to work? Yeah, that's the idea. You know, you're right smart for a girl. We do need men around here. Do you know anything about horses? Yes, ma'am. Met quite a few in my time. How about the ones you haven't met before? <laughs> well, I leave that to my partner. He's right smart at getting acquainted. Well, I guess I had to take a chance on you. Uh, the uh, stable need cleaning. <laughs> I've never kept the house for horses before, but you'll be right proud of me before I get through. Miss Lindsay, I think we ought to only have men around here we know all about. Well, everybody knows me. I thought maybe you did. Put them to work. All right. Come on, you fella. Thanks, boss. Put your things in that bunkhouse. We decide what to do. Thanks, partner. Didn't get the name. That little one looks kind of silly. Yeah, Jake. About as silly as a rattlesnake hanging on the end of your finger. You know, 
I got the idea that you'd met Alex before. Not only met him, but I've done him a great favor. Yeah? Yeah, I saved him from committing a downright dishonest act. I don't doubt it. Go on with your story. Over in Colorado, Alex took a right nice herd of horses from a fella without the fella knowing it at the time. And I suppose you talked him into giving them back? Well, I don't even better than that. In order to make sure that the owner got them back, I took them horses myself. And I started looking for that fella. But you know, I looked and I looked and I looked and I never, I never could locate him. Finally, I had to sell them horses myself. You got to figure I'll leave short on brains, but long on shooting. He's the best shot in the West. Killer? Occasionally. You see that tomato can on that scarecrow? Yeah. Well, he'd do it like this. Ah, you little rascal. I didn't think you had it in you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll tell you what we'll do. I'll take the first go, you take the second go, and we'll shoot together. This ranch is spooky. And with Arledge here, it makes it more so. A little too handy with those guns they have around here. Get rid of them quick. It's easier said than done. Put him up in Box Canyon tonight as horse guard. Pretty far out, ain't it? I'd say it was just about far enough. What's that? Sounds like a sissy rattlesnake. Hey. Hey, you fellas ought to be more careful. You nearly hit me a little while ago. I was a scarecrow. Hey, you quit playing scarecrow and keep your eye out for old Andy. Oh, I thought you were going to help me to elope. I'm in love. And you don't know how terrible it feels. You'll feel a whole lot worse if they catch you around here. Hey, I'm sending you two to keep the horses out of Box Canyon tonight. Whose idea was that? Never mind. Box Canyon. I guess it's Box Canyon. Shall be melancholy again. 
must realize, darling, it isn't a long to watch this, too. I want you to wait until you're old enough to know your own mind. I don't want to wait until I know my own mind. I want to be dragged by my hair to my lover's cave. I felt the same way about it when I was your age. But the right man never came along, and I lost interest. What about that pillow I saw you talking to in the yard today? From the window here, you look more than interested. Maybe I was. For a minute. And then? And then he started to tell me how to run the ranch. Started right in by trying to boss me. There are enough people around here now trying to do that. I'm going to do my own thinking and my own bossing. Stop the pouting and get dressed for supper. Oh, I'd feel better about it if they hadn't put poor Alonzo in jail. It seems so foreign to his finer nature. Don't let that worry you. By this time, he's on his way to Kentucky and thinking about you every moment. Oh, that's the trouble with him. He's always thinking. Oh, I want him to do something. About time those fellows were showing up to relieve us. Yeah, I was so sleepy, I couldn't see a horse thief if I heard one. Get down to that fire over there. We'll call you when we want you. Well, this is what I call real hospitality. What do you mean now? Nothing. Except them that picked out a nice place for us to sleep. Yeah. You know, I was thinking the same thing. Hmm. Oh, well. Where'd you leave him? Over by the fire in the big rock. Get their horses. They won't eat them anymore. Now that you're dead, why don't you lay down? I don't mind all his killing us, but taking our horses away is going to store up a guinea. About an hour ago, you told me he's only three miles further. <laughs> hey, that's cheating. I've been cheating myself all my life. Ever catch yourself? Well, I'm too smart for that. <laughs> Darling. Darling. Don't be frightened. It's me. Your own Alonzo come to rescue you. Where are you? In the water trough, dearest, ready to die for you. Well, of all places. First you act like a rabbit, now you're behaving like a water lily. Come on to bed this evening, and I'll never speak to you again. Oh, I can't, dearest. I really can't. Adams is around here, and he's promised to shoot me. I wouldn't blame him if he did. But I've got help, darling. And this time when we sneak away, nothing will stop us. Ouch. You listen to me, Alonzo Mojo. I'm not going to sneak away, and I'm not going to lobe with a horse off. Oh, but darling. Don't you darling me. Ow. Let up. Ow. <laughs> Let up. Let up, darling. Ow. Let up. The 
If my feet hurt that bad, I wouldn't go back. And I promise to eat no fat kid, and I'll do it. Even if I have to wear a horseshoe. By the way, what are you going back for? Oh, just a little unfinished business. Can't be that you're worried about that sassy she-boss of yours. No. No, she's in a lot of trouble and doesn't know it. Ah, uh, she won't thank you none for telling her. She's pretty sure of herself. Yeah. Yeah, they're the kind that need help the most. Uh, I guess you're right. What are you bringing him in for? You can't drive that herd while he's with them. They follow every move he makes. I'll keep him in the corral. We'll get rid of the herd. You should have shot him. He's a killer, isn't he? Colonel Lindsay's the only man that ever rode him. No one else could lay a hand on him. He killed a couple that tried it. Yeah. You said you put enough lead into those fellas to hold them down from now on. And this piece of horse flesh I ever saw. Seems kind of spooky. Maybe Arlie's bit him. So far, you've made a hundred percent monkey out of yourself. Hey, maybe I can use that horse after all. I'm going down to the bunkhouse and try to beat some of this fire out of my feet, starting to spread to my pants. Hello, boy. You don't look so good this morning. Maybe you didn't sleep so well last night. I slept all right. That's funny. I thought maybe you walked in your sleep. We're breaking out some horses for saddle work. You Wyoming boys are generally pretty good at that sort of thing. Try a hand on this one. That's right, Mr. Adams. I always start with the easiest one first. When that boy comes out of that corral, he better come out of riding. What's Honey Boy doing here? He belongs with the herd. Laramie wants to break him to the saddle again. Oh, Mr. Laramie. Yes, Miss Harriet? Please be careful. Since my father's death, that horse has developed a bad reputation. A lot of us have that don't deserve it. Maybe he's one of them. Hand me that hackamore there. Thanks, boy. Is he burning it up? I'm afraid he'll get hurt. Oh, Larry, never heard a horse in his life. Why, he can tame anything. Horses, cattle, or women. I ever did see. I got a right good notion to send you back home to Kentucky. Never. Without her. You know. Yeah, the only 
trouble with you is you don't like the folks around here. Well, I don't blame you. I don't like them either. That is, most of them. They're not the right kind of people. You know, if I was... If I was to tell that girl what a tough spot she's in, she'd have me run right off the place. Well, that's what comes of not having any horse sense like you've got. Now, come on, son. I'm going to get you a saddle on. You know what she wants? What? She wants a caveman. What? You know, one of those fellas with a big black beard. And he lives in a cave and, and drags women around and around and around by the hair. Now, let me give you a word of warning, son. Get all that hair dragging in before you get married. But don't you see, this makes it very simple. Yeah. All we got to do is get you a cave and a beard. That's just the idea. If I had a beard, maybe she'd take me seriously. Now, I'm just going to leave that on for a while, son, and till it feels natural again. Come on, come on. Is your horse, Miss Harriet? <laughs> he doesn't deserve that bad reputation you spoke about. He's always been dangerous. No, not dangerous. He just knew too much. Is that what you were trying to tell me a while ago? <laughs> I didn't know anybody was listening. I, I was talking to the horse. Well, I know the horse is grateful for your advice. Maybe the horse needs it, but I'm quite sure I don't. Maybe so, but I'll just stick around here a couple of days until uh, I find out whether you do or not. Well, I don't need you. I don't want you here. I think you'd better go. <laughs> you know better than that. You keep out of this. Oh, it tickles. Tickles? <laughs> you know that you and the mattress are getting to look more alike every minute. We'd have trouble with those fellas. Well, get 
him and put a guard over him. We're going to look over the stables. You fill a circle around the back way. Come on, Austin, get in there. Get out of those blankets until you get dry. You know what? You better stay down here and let racket quiet down. Here. Oh. Now, what's the matter with you? There's, there's, there's a dead man in there. What? And I think he's still alive. Why, it's old Andy. What happened, Andy? They're fixing to steal a herd, just as I thought. Come on, let's get him out of here. Take him easy. That herd will be out here in a half an hour. I overheard the whole scheme. I didn't think Arledge had brains enough to pull a deal like this. Arledge and his gang are just hired hands. Adams is the fellow who's going to steal this herd. Who? Monroe Adams. That's the old war paint. He's mighty sensitive. Kicks every time he hears a whistle. Yeah? You mean like... <whistles> You're right. Say, hey, listen, Andy. You think you can get help from Railhead? Haven't got time. My men are up in the hills. If I can find them, I'll be coming back. Listen, Lonesome. Give Andy your horse. Go on. Huh? Tracks. Watch that door. Andy off all right? Yeah. Lonesome, you keep out of there. Come on, Tracky. I see you found Laramie all right. Yeah, I found him. Old Andy was with him. I hit him just where I wanted him. He got scared and ran away. Yeah, I can see you got the best of it. I'm taking those horses south myself. Those horses don't leave without me. All right, come on if you think you can make it. I'll make it all right. You fellas go out and find him and don't come back till you do. What are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're hiding. Nobody would think of looking for us here. 
I'll have to ask you to leave immediately. Mr. Adams has told me how Olive saved the horses you tried to steal. I'm sorry it turned out this way. I never stole a horse in my life. Right now, Trax and I are going to steal the whole herd. And you're going to help us steal it. Trax, keep your eye on that window. Monroe Adams has agents posted across the border waiting to buy those horses. He's getting them out of here in 15 minutes. Adams? I don't believe you. Well, that part's not important. We sent old Andy for help, but he won't be back here in time, so we're stealing the horses first. Before we leave, I'm telling you, we changed our mind about our share. We want half, but we don't go. Suppose men won't give it to you. We'll take those horses ourselves. I'd have you stop before you got to the border. Not if I attend to you before we leave. It seemed kind of funny at first stealing your own horses. <laughs> but you'll get used to it. Trax, take Miss Lindsay out through the kitchen. I'll get the pasture gates open. We can start now. For once in your life, you're taking orders instead of giving them. Don't call for help. Now do as I tell you. I've been looking everywhere for you. You know, I think there's something going on around here. You do? Yeah. And I was thinking the same thing. Now, listen. You get over to the ranch house over there and keep your eye on those fellas. Yeah. See if you can hold them back a few minutes. Yeah. Oh! oh. Uh, yeah, me? Gee. Come any closer, I'll be obliged to shoot you. Get out of the way, you idiot. on tobacco.
And I now pronounce you four people, men and wives. <laughs> now, the parties of the first part will kiss the parties of the second part. The marriage becomes legal. Any orders, boss? You know better than that. Oh, you won't be needing this anymore, dear. You know, I was just thinking. Don't start that again. Come on, honey. It becomes legal the moment I get my seat. <laughs> the marriage becomes legal directly after I receive my seat. <laughs> 